All righty. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. Hello, hello, everybody. I hope this message finds you alive, alert, awake, and enthusiastic about life and living. I am Elizabeth Green, the founder of the Indigo Institute of Nevada, where as a spiritual teacher and guide, I work with all of you highly sensitive natural born leaders, which I call indigos, uh, live your best life now. And it is my mission, my purpose to share tips, strategies, and resources that will help you live your best life now. And I'm coming on today with my guest, Anna Mariah New. Hello, Anna. Hello, Elizabeth. <laughs> I really am so happy that you would join me today as we discuss how indigos or whatever you want to call yourself, <laughs> uh, but sensitives, how they can balance and renew their, protect and renew their energies. As <clears throat> You know, I am always pushing to get the best information to you. And uh, as I'm talking to my <laughs> listeners, and one of the things that is common as a common trait of indigos is that they're highly sensitive to their environment, to the energy that is around them. Uh, I didn't mention I am now an author. I have my new book, Building Spiritual Muscle, which is one indigo's journey to selfhood. But I talk about all of those many traits that indigos do have. And one of them is being sensitive to their environment. And so sensitive that sometimes it can really throw you for a loop. Now I talk about my story, but I've had on several, I've done several other interviews on a, a Mariah to, um, with other indigos because you may not see yourself in my story, but perhaps in your story. Anna, would you tell us, Anna is a gemstone empath. But what I'd like you to do before we really get into that is just tell us a little bit where you're from, what you're doing, and um, about your family. Okay. Go. Uh, okay. Um, I am currently in Southern Oregon, which I absolutely adore. I was, grew up in Oregon and was away for many years, and I'm back happily looking out at the rain. <laughs> um, but I am a gemstone empath, which means I just, the stones talk to me, and that's really exciting to me. And But for many years, I've, I've known I was really sensitive all my life, and for a lot of my time, I felt like I was a little bit crazy. People would look at me and go, what? What's your problem? I don't get it. As I'd retreat to my room with a book, you know, because that, that was how I protected myself growing up. It's like, okay, there's a room, there's a door, there's a book, and nobody bothers you when you're reading a book. And luckily, that's not so much of a problem anymore because I've learned ways of dealing with it. And in fact, I've learned ways to change it from being something I really have to work against to something I can use in some positive ways as well. And that's yeah. when I finally learned that was when I was able to start working with the gemstones and help other people figure out what's going on for them. 
Yeah, it's amazing that you said that you retreated to your, well, it's not amazing, it's just common, <laughs> that you retreated to your room with a book, and that's what I did. You know, people were saying, oh, you're way too sensitive, you know, and you knew that what you were feeling was real, and so you had a tendency to hide, to be around in a very sheltered environment. I know there are several um, people who their highest, our guides talk to us in many different ways. And as an empath, you feel, you are a feeler. And it's as an Indigo, it's important to identify how they talk to you because when you know how they talk to you, it becomes a blessing instead of a curse. I have a, a ebook that I have that's called Curse or Blessing because when you don't know what's happening, you think it's a curse. When you understand it, then you can utilize it to take action to create the life you want. And that is one of the reasons that being a gemstone empath, I think is so important because once you realize that there are stones that you can utilize to repel mm -hmm. people's energy, to ground, your own energy to heighten your energy that once you become aware that hey wait a minute i can get control of this and when did you discover that you could get control of it anna the first well, i started learning some techniques and back in the early 90s and because i was getting more and more sensitive to the point that i would walk into like a psychic fair or something where there were a lot of people. And within a half an hour, I'd be sitting outside on the steps in tears. And so I started learning some energy ways to deal with it, but it still wasn't quite what I really needed. And I finally really understood it when I moved to Montana and I was working with somebody that was a little crazy. She was bipolar and we were trying to do something create something and it just wasn't happening and she we would be having a nice conversation and all of a sudden she'd be screaming at me and unfortunately because i was so sensitive it, just, it was just like all that energy just came right into me and i couldn't think i couldn't talk i couldn't even respond like a normal person and so what happened is one time she did this and i literally could not breathe and my friend who lived next door took me down the road to a woman named Virginia Brown who just happened to own a company called the Bioelectric Shield. But she also did some energy touch stuff and she kind of cleared things out and so I could breathe again, which was great. And she gave me a shield to wear. And I just looked at her and said, like, well, really? You think that's really gonna make a difference? It's a little teeny thing. And she says, yeah, just trust me and just give it a try. if you." like it you can keep it and i said well i can't afford it so she said if i liked it and wanted to keep it i could come to work for her so about two weeks after this i had this huge altercation with my crazy boss and instead of getting overwhelmed and feeling like i was in a battle with my worst enemy all of a sudden i was just like straightened up and i looked her right in the eye and i said you know, why don't we just take this up at a later time when we can have a reasonable discussion? And so just let me know when that time is and, you know, I'll meet with you then. And I turned around and walked away. And as I'm walking away, it was all I could do to keep from going, oh my God, that's the coolest thing ever. Because it was the most, it was the most empowered that I had ever felt because I, I really was able to think and respond in a reasonable manner instead of being the sponge that was just taking it all in. And that was, for me, the beginning of really being able to have some control over what was going on. And since then, I've been studying more and more about it. 
I, I write about it in my book. I talk about picking up on, on excess energy is especially true for young indigos. There's a rise in the medication that's being used on school age children. Many are diagnosed as being hyperactive or having ADHD, where it's they have not found a healthy way to get rid of this excess energy. And also the second thing that they are really sensitive is the environmental toxins. You know, scientists have discovered a huge link between ADHD and environmental toxins. Some of the toxins that we are all exposed to are our EMFs or our electromagnetic shields. And those are given to us by the power lines, the stereos, the cell phones, the cordless phones, and the computers all emanate EMS. And, you know, I first met you when I was doing the show on this, I think almost a year ago, where it was really bombarding me and, you know, I wanted to get my message across. I wanted to use the computer to do it. But as a very aware empath, the more I open up, the more it was affecting me. I was finding I was getting dizzy. I was, because of the lack of energy, I would, um, any prolong. Uh, use my cell phone. I would have headaches and eye strain if I use the computer too long. So I found a device similar to the one that uh, Anna found that helped me to begin to really get in tune with this. I have, the more I open up, I cannot just use a shield. I have many things that I utilize in my office to uh, be able to do that. Wearing jewelry. Like I see that you have on, um, and she talked about bio, oh, let me say it right, um, bioelectric shields. But you notice behind Anna all of her beautiful jewelry and gemstones that can also help in grounding you. Talk about that, Anna. Oh, it's one of my favorite things. It's like, um, because one of my favorites for empaths and sensitive is, I don't know, can you see this? Mm -hmm. These are all lapis and kyanite. And this is a combination I call the empaths bridge because the kyanite is protected. Hold it up a little bit more. Yeah, the kyanite is protective and grounding. Great. And check, yeah, and check out that tree of life in there. I don't know if I've got it in the right bring place it, there. Bring it to the, oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, so yes. Three I'm looking at that. There. That biggest piece at the top is calling to me. Oh, what is that? Yeah, about? That, that is lapis, and it's a phoenix. Uh, I always have to have several phoenix pieces in my line because the phoenix is reminiscent or talks about, you know, restarting over, and many of us have restart our lives over and over and over and reinvent ourselves because as we shift and change what's important to us changes the things that we need to be doing will change and this is some of the things <laughs> i have a funny story if if we're not listening to these things that, that are being telling us to change the universe will help us i was oh. once in a job that i knew it was ending and i wasn't quitting it burned down in the middle of the night. And that was my first instance of, I think this might be a message. <laughs> so I, I, <laughs> I know exactly what you mean, Anna. I was in a job uh, making the most money I had ever made 
in my life. You know, I had all the perks, the car, the the office that was applied. I had, you know, I had all of the perks. I had the travel and stuff, but it was a sales position that did not call to my spirit. It was something that I was doing because of the money. And like you said, I kept hearing, you are on the wrong path, girl. <laughs> you are on the wrong path. And you know, you're like, but I'm making money. I'm making money, you know, but you're not happy, girl. And so I did it for a year and I kept saying to myself, well, you know, I guess I'll I'll just finish out the year. Well, I exactly finished out the year. My boss gave me, told me he was downsizing me at Christmas. And I know people were like, oh my God, how could you, you know, aren't you devastated? For me, it was some of the best news I got. I was at peace. I knew I took responsibility for it. I knew that I had asked for it. <laughs> Conscious, unconsciously, <laughs> I didn't realize how the universe was going to open up the door for me, <laughs> whether it be a burnt down building <laughs> or a, I'll <laughs> see you later, <laughs> layoff. Um, when you ask for things, they always are answered. Yeah, but let me get back to how to balance, how to balance and protect. It is um, you talked about renewal, renewal, and the phoenix being a renewal or restarting over. I think that once we take responsibility for ourselves and the only person that we try to save is the man in the mirror mm-hmm. then we became we, we become more attuned to what works and what doesn't work um tell us about you have um a a article that you wrote uh, about uh survival secrets why don't you share that with us anna because I'm looking at the time. Yeah. All right. So can you see my screen now? Mm-hmm. Okay. So as long as you can see it, um, this is one that I wrote because um, with the bioelectric shield, I work a lot oh, with. What? Wait, a, wait just a minute. Did you choose the right one that you're sharing? I you're don't see see okay. that slide yet can you see it now there we go there we go okay okay last time i did this it was showing on my other screen so apologies <laughs> yeah oh, so i forget in, you're, you're a tech specialist and you have two cameras going on huh? <laughs> i yeah i know i i have to have two screens and it works that way um but I've been working with the shield company since 1994 when it completely changed my life. And in that time, I constantly talk with people who are sensitive and, you know, often it's just so wonderful to even talk to somebody that says, yeah, I understand. And I don't think you're crazy. And so I've been writing articles and helping people come up with some, just some simple tips that will make a difference in how sensitive they are. And um, so I just have a little list of 10, lighten up on yourself. You know, don't judge yourself for not being like everybody else. You're different. And that puts you in a very special category. What was that? And that's that's a special and, and accept it. Hey, lighten up, have a little bit of humor. Number two. Yeah, yeah you're never gonna be like everybody else. And then make a choice. Is it a gift or a curse? I go on HSP websites all the time on, you know, Facebook and stuff, and everybody's constantly complaining. Start looking at it with gratitude and thinking about what the what the benefits are. One of the be- greatest ones is you know when somebody's telling the truth because you can feel it in your gut. And 
the more you listen to your gut and your guides, the clearer your in information will get and the more you'll trust it. Um, okay, and, and stop, I'm gonna stop you there. Yes. I'm gonna stop you there with, um, for just a minute in about, you can tell that somebody's telling the truth. It is critical at this time for you to really begin to recognize your guidance. As Anna said, Anna Mariah said, she feels hers. She can just feel it. My daughter-in-law, she will have dreams. I may mm. have a voice that comes through. It's critical that you begin to recognize how your guidance is being given to you and then follow it, opposed to listening to everything on the outside. The only person that can control you is you. And once you're aware as to what's affecting you, like number three, we're going to talk about it in a minute, uh, then you can find ways, and that's why I have Anna on, here's a resource that can help you be able to be aware of other people's emotion. Go ahead, Anna, with number three. All right. Just before I get on to number three, I just want to mention, if you go to bioelectricshield.com forward says quiz, I spent six months developing an HSP empath quiz that not only tells you, yep, you're sensitive, because you already knew that or you wouldn't be taking it, but it breaks it down into six different areas of sensitivity. And at the end, you get links to six different articles that include things like this, but also some more in-depth things that help you deal with specific places that are triggers and sensitivities for you. And we've gotten and it's, huge feedback. It's an excellent quiz. Anna sent it to me. I took it. It's a very excellent quiz because the more you know about yourself then you can be able to create the life that you want opposed to being so worried about what everybody else is doing and letting their emotions and pain and fear soak in you learn to say hmm is this me or them yes absolutely hmm. so the more you're aware of Go ahead. When yeah, so be aware when you've taken on somebody else's emotions. And how I usually figure that out is I'll check in if suddenly I'm really sad or frustrated or angry. I check in and see if this makes sense with what's actually going on in my life. And frequently it's not. And that's when I realize this is not mine. So I've just learned to, number one, acknowledge that it's not mine because it makes it a lot easier to release it. And then mm -hmm. rest and visualize that energy leaving you and filling you with yourself up with love instead. And this is especially important right now because we not only pick up energy and emotions from specific people, but we also pick up energy from a layer of fear that's around the planet. And right now with the elections and stuff, people are really fearful and very anxious. So a lot of people that I'm talking to are reporting being more exhausted, uh, feeling like they have a foggy brain and a whole lot of other things. And part of that is just how we're so inundated with the amount of energy and fear that's circ circulating right now. And for me, I okay. find that every time I just say, that's what's going on, it gets better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let me have you stop sharing for just a second. Okay. Okay. Because I want to make a comment on uh, that um, that question that you, you stated about the fear that's surrounding our world at this particular time and how we as conscious indigos or conscious sensitive people can protect ourselves and also be able to radiate that energy out to others. Uh, yesterday, I had the privilege of working at the polls. I spent now for me, um, 
I am in my environment here where I have all of my crystals and I've used feng shui and um, essential oils and everything to balance my energy. Well, I volunteered a while ago to be part of the polls, um, you know, <laughs> to be a <laughs> to work the polls. One, because as entrepreneurs, you're always looking for creative ways to bring more funds in while you're establishing yourself. And at that time when I volunteered, this is something <laughs> that I needed, okay? But it wasn't something that as an empath, I was like, yeah, hey, 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 I'm going to be around a bunch of folks who, yeah, 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 I'm going to be around a bunch of folks that are negative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I had committed myself. So yesterday I got up, got up late, which doesn't bode well to setting the right path. And I was rushing around again. I'm thinking at first, I'm going to be around all of these people. What the heck am I going to do? And I was glad I listened to my guidance because I got this thing like, wait a minute, walk your talk, which meant. Take time to breathe. Take time to shield your aura before you go out. I put on my essential oils, which Monica has made for me called Peace, Peace of Mind. You know, that really just had me grounded. I had on my, uh, what is it? Hematite is the black one that you put on as grounding. Yeah. That's yeah, it's, it's the kind of gray black that's very grounding and very protective. Okay. Um, I had on my necklace, I put on them on my hand, and I set the intention that I was going to have a great day. I didn't know how, but I was going to have a great day. And it turned out to be the most rewarding and energetic day because I set the intention, and I went out with my raincoat on. I didn't go out just bare. When you know that there is a forecast with the weather, you put on the proper clothing. When I knew that the energy already, like you said, a bunch of fear out there, I needed to put on my protective energy shield that would help me be able to navigate it. And I was so amazed. It always amazes me when you see it just happened that everybody that was around you was at peace. What could have been a violent situation turned into a peaceful situation. And when you realize that fear is simply false evidence appearing real, don't buy into it. You know, when you feel it, you make a conscious choice to push it back to find a way that you can deal with it. Sorry about that. <laughs> but it was coming through so strong that you set your intention and you put on your shields. That's why I'm trying to bring resources. Yeah, stuff is going to happen out there. But we can create the lifestyle we want by being aware of how it affects us and then going in prepared. Absolutely. Yeah. You know. I find one thing that's really helpful too is to, at the end of every day, think about what actually worked and have gratitude because that reinforces the good things that are happening. And many years ago, I was given an exercise for 30 days. I had to spend five minutes at the end of the day. This is while I was working with the crazy person. I And she was constantly making me feel like, oh my God, nothing I do is right. So I was given an exercise of spending five minutes of writing down everything that went right that day. And it still comes to mind if I'm like struggling or saying, oh my God, I really screwed that up or I didn't get this done. Then I stop and just instantly just go, however, I got this and this and this and this done. And it might not have been on my list, but it was important in that moment. 
and so you, you switched, yeah. like I said, from you switched to the FM channel, that one that you freely manifest, where you're content, where you're hopeful, where you're grateful, opposed to, and when you're hopeful and grateful and appreciative, things come to you. Opposed to that AM channel that always mad, you're angry, you're irritated. You know, I could have been irritated about having to go and stand on my feet. I could have been upset that I got up late, but I chose to flip it, to consciously flip it and say, thank you for this avenue of money. Thank you for seeing, and I was so inspired by all the people who are getting out to vote. You know, I'm, I don't care who you vote for, okay? I really don't care who you vote for because I feel if you vote your conscience, you will vote rightly. But do not give up your ability to choose. You know, that power of choice. Don't think, and it felt so good to see people say, I don't care what they may be broadcasting. I'm coming out and I believe that my one vote, your one light will make a big difference when we join it together. Beautiful. you know, it's like, ah, <laughs> but I'm looking at the time. I said I was going to try to keep these the interviews because, you know, we as Indigos tend to have a short tension span. <laughs> I was going to try to keep them no longer than a half an hour. I am going to have to have you back, Anna, because there's so much more. And to read, to see the rest of the article, just go to bioelectricshield.com and click on the link that says EMF dangers, which we're changing that, and then go down to highly sensitive person. And it's about the fourth article down on the list. And I'm going to have... definitely take our quiz because that's yep. just lots of info. Yeah, I am going to have all of the links from uh, from Anna so that you can uh, go ahead and, and click on it. I'm going to send her a copy of the recording so that she can post it because it's time for us to come out of the closet. We now don't have to hide in our room uh, afraid of going out because the energy is going to, to affect us. You do have resources either through gemstones or through the bioelectric shield that can protect you and allow you to navigate this plane joyfully, you know? Um, Anna, anything else, any last message? I, I apologize about being so chatty today, but hey, that's the yeah. way they are. <laughs> well, we're having a chat, weren't we? <laughs> you know, and the main thing, you know, just the biggest message I think I have for everybody is to really trust your intuition. And because every time we try to, oh, no, that's not important, or no, I'm really not feeling that, or I'm not getting that message, or, oh, they must be telling the truth, because I can't see a reason why they would not be. Just trust your instincts, because that will always guide you to where you need to be. And it's been my biggest learning and biggest blessing also, is just paying attention to what's working and what I'm hearing. Anna, Anna Mariah, I thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, to my uh, listening audience, I invite you to join me in a challenge that I was debating about it, but since I'm going to be out at the polls, I'm going to ask you to join me as I walk my talk of learning how to listen to your guidance and I will be posting it so that you'll have all the details, but starting Sunday, a five day challenge of, hey, 
are you listening to your guidance? And it's going to be over in my um, group uh, built. It's the workout zone, which I think is going to be the title of the show. If we continue as a show, I, I'm liking it. I'm loving being able to interview people like you I, and see you and, and see all of the great stuff that you have behind you because I'm in Vegas and you are in? I am in Medford, Oregon, just outside of Ashland and an hour and a half from my favorite place in the whole world, Mount Shasta. <laughs> I'm going to have to get there. People keep saying oh, it's such a beautiful place. You must. And when you come, I'll tune you in on a bed and breakfast that has the most amazing view of the mountain and they're friendly and nice and it's not even expensive which is totally awesome oh like, okay <laughs> i'm gonna have to jot that down well i'm gonna go ahead and close the show out i hope that um we have provided uh, information. I know we have provided information that can make a difference if you go ahead and use it. And if you need help using it, you can always contact Anna Mariah and I'll put all of her links there. And you certainly can contact me, Kay Elizabeth Green. Just like these videos and you'll be noted when we're having them, like our both of our pages. And we are, um, I think that that's it. May light, love, and plenty of laughter accompany you on your journey. I am Elizabeth, and for Anna, Mariah, and myself, I'd say be blessed. <laughs>